The Menace Tech Show. Welcome to the Menace Tech Show, a show for HVAC professionals by HVAC professionals. The Menace Tech, Tech Show. show. It's So, Tom, uh, rumor has it you're from New Hampshire. I am. Yeah? Whereabouts? Whereabouts? I live in Deering, New Hampshire. Deering. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. I, I used to live up in uh, on Sunapee. Sunapee, New Hampshire. Yep. About which a half I, hour. Yeah. Which, oh, it is that close. Yeah. Oh, so you're up there. Okay. Yeah. And uh, up there, they call it Sunapee, <laughs> which is flying geese. Yes. You probably heard that. Oh, yeah. I thought you like said maybe centipede. eight minutes ago. You heard yeah, it, but I you heard know. it from you. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't so. the governor's name Sunupi? No, <laughs> Sununu. Close. Sununu. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've seen a millipede. <laughs> oh, don't start on that. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, uh, one of the nice products they make up there is maple sugar, uh, maple syrup, maple yeah, syrup, yeah, not just yeah. Vermont or yeah. Canada. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Maple syrup. Yeah, so, so, so tell, tell us about that. How does that work? Well, I, it just so happens that I work for a Diamond Elite dealer in Keene called Bergeron Mechanical Systems, yeah, yeah. and our general manager has a maple sugaring operation. Oh, wow. So he has well over a 1,000 taps. A thousand um, taps. So what's a tap? Just a little, I know what it tap, is. But. A tap is what you put into the tree to yeah, drain yeah. the syrup out. I forget what he said. I think it takes. It's, either 40, I, it's between I, 40 and 50 gallons of sap. Per to make gallon, one gallon per of gallon. maple syrup. Yeah. Yeah. My son la- does it with the Boy Scouts. And to give you an idea, last year he got uh, 1,200 gallons of uh, wow. maple syrup. Of maple syrup. Times so supplied 50. times 50, or yeah. roughly. Yeah. 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 So, so does he have the buckets on the trees, like old school? Uh, no, it all yeah, drains yeah, yeah. See, down into a yeah. big, so, big so bin. So when I grew up, you know, we used to go up there skiing and stuff like that back in the early 60s. I mean, early 70s. But you'd, you'd see everybody out there with the carts and stuff and the horses and stuff picking up all the buckets. But now it's all tied in with, with like, PVC and stuff like that. A little bit different. Yeah, yeah no, my son does it with the Boy Scouts. And um, every day, some, we do the five-gallon buckets. And every day, it's a different parent and a different scout go out there and empty. There's like 40 or 50 buckets. Mm-hmm. It takes a few hours to empty them into, you know, and then replace the buckets. And then somebody comes and picks them up. And then they take it to what's called, I think, a sugar shack, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know anything about that process? Uh, I, a little bit, but probably not enough to, you know, calm you technical guys down. Well, no, you can. You, <laughs> you, you, we'll, we'll back it. Just make it up. We'll back yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, I you know, you. What they do is they boil it down. I, mm-hmm. I know there's one part of it where it starts to foam up, and they right. actually use a drop of bacon grease to make all the foam Ooh, go. Right. Bacon oh, grease. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So bacon it's a pretty neat operation. Maple sugar. What we do in Keene, we're kind of famous in Keene at Bergeron Mechanical because every time we do a show, we give everyone who comes into our booth a little bottle of maple syrup. Oh, that gets them all wound uh, up. Did, did you give, bring any here? Uh, I didn't bring it. <sighs> you know, the next time you come to Southboro, you're bringing some maple syrup. Yeah. I will bring you oh, okay. Southboro. I'm not sure I can get into Florida with maple no, syrup. That's okay. They don't know. Yeah. even have maple syrup. Yeah. But do, listen, do, don't you know that? They so do sell them. You can get maple syrup at like different times of the year, yeah. okay? And, like, the beginning, the first batch is, is, is really dark brown. And that's like the that's like the golden syrup, but uh, yeah, maple syrup is a big deal up in New Hampshire. Yeah, you know, you know what what aggravates me is you go to breakfast, everything. Yeah, so everything does aggravate me. But you go to breakfast and they have log cabin maple syrup there. And you have to ask for the real maple syrup, and they bring you a little dish. They charge you a little extra, a little cup. Right, you know, it's right. real ma- maple syrup. If you look on log cabin, and I probably shouldn't throw them under the bus, but you, yeah, but you are. But it says. It it says on 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 the the front of the bottle, no high fructose corn syrup. You turn the bottle around, you look at the ingredients, and the first ingredient is corn syrup. Right. They just took out the high fructose out of the the, the name and how they're advertising it. But right. that's not real maple syrup. Right. No one should ever eat that. Real maple syrup has one ingredient: Correct. maple. Maple. It's just the ma- the sap from the maple trees and. From uh, what I learned from the scouts is what's really good is if it's below freezing at night and above freezing and during the day, that's when the sap flows the best. That's when the trees start oh, flowing. Wow. Right. And then they bring it in. They basically yeah. boil, it, boil it down. And I think we all understand evaporation. And it evaporates. And what's left behind is just maple syrup. And it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. 
It just means me that somewhere at some time, somebody looked at a tree and said, get the sap out of that. Let's boil it down and put it on a waffle. And then the other person said, what's a waffle? Well, we'll get to that later. But it's just amazing somebody figured that out. Yeah, and, so, and the thing is, that sap tastes horrible. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's disgusting. You know what I'll also have to bring you down to uh, Southboro is my wife's maple ice cream. Oh. Oh. So, Oh my goodness! Yeah. I want some now. Yeah, I'll give you my address in Cincinnati. Um, you can okay. see I will be back in Southboro on Monday. I expect <laughs> yeah, you to I'm, be I'm there. Not, I'm <laughs> pretty sure if we go to Publix down here, we're not going to find out. No. Uh, yeah. be- no. be- Betsy's here, Paul. So you yeah. might want to track okay. her down. Okay, I'm going to go talk to her, butter her. I'll drive up to. Uh, wait a minute. How far of a drive is that from Southboro? Uh, it's probably ninety minutes. Well so. worth it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Maple ice cream. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Anyway, anyway, welcome everyone to the Metis Tech Show. My name is Paul Shavs. I'm here with Roland Wager. Say hello. hi, Roland. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Come Juan on, Cardona. Say Hola. hi. Hola. And our special guest today is Tom Harrington with Marble, and it's M A R B L Marble. So, Tom, thank you, and you know, uh, for for joining us, and thank you, and Paul. welcome. Tell us a little bit about Marble and what it is. So, Marble is a interactive design tool. Uh, meant for a Mitsubishi diamond contractor and a homeowner to be able to go through their house and discover and design the one system that the customer needs to solve their problems um, and then give them a price on that system on the first sales call. So um, we, I know we're going to get into this in a little bit, but we, we do a room-by-room room, uh, load calculation from there, we combine those rooms into zones and select indoor units for each zone. And then once you've done that, you move on to outdoor units. It'll show you all the outdoor units that are available for that connected system. And as you scroll over the outdoor units, it gives you in real time the operational performance on each outdoor unit. So you can just go in real time from unit to unit and dial in the most efficient Solution so, for the homeowner. So this is an app, mm-hmm. all right, and it works with any smart device? Uh, any I, iOS or Android. Okay. Uh, right, we right. recommend tablets rather than phones because right. it's Makes kind more of small sense. on right, a phone. Right, right. Yeah, blind people like me would appreciate that. Yeah. 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 And, and <laughs> I'll just clear something up. This actually does the load calcs too? It does load it does. calcs. Wow, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, we anticipate it being Manual J approved by the end of the year. Our ah. application. Oh, that's important because yeah, because you need, now you can print those out and supply those when 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 and if the inspector asks for them. But right. but by code, every job needs a load calculation done. Mm-hmm. In some states, yes. Yeah. 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 So what what is different about Marble from anything else that's out there right now? So there's a lot of tools out there where once your salesperson has designed a system then they can pull those part numbers from a price list and build a proposal. Marble's different in that it focuses on the design and you and your you and your customer building that one perfect system. And once you and, and the customer agree you have the system that they want, the proposal's ready and waiting. You don't need to build a proposal. Right there. So I'm not so this is the scenario that I'm used to is I go out to the job site I look at it, I get a bunch of information, and I run back to the office, and I put it all back together, and then a couple of days later, I come back out to the customer's house, and and I give them a proposal then. This is on the spot. It's on the spot, and and the reason that is is because when you, the process by which you build a system is what builds value in the customer because they're seeing a data-driven solution to their Mm -hmm. problem. And when you leave the house, all of that emotion leaves with you. So, um, you know, what, what I tend to say, Paul, is, is HVAC salesmen tend to view their personal value as the things they do outside the home. Mm-hmm. They think that if they go back to their office like you just described and spend a couple hours doing a load calc and, and consulting with the distributor to make sure the design is right and everything's compatible, they think they've done a really good thing for the customer. And they have, but what they don't realize is the customer didn't see that. So the customer didn't gain Mm -hmm. any value. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you design that system in front of the customer and then show them with the operational performance that it's going to work, 
they now want that system because they know that what they're buying from you is going to solve their yeah, problem. Yeah, and you're making them part of the process. Right. Exactly. I think it was Henry Henry Ford who said, uh, tell me and I won't remember, show me and I might remember, involve me and I'll remember right. it forever. Yeah, that's actually very good. Yeah. All right, so Tom, um, I'm thinking of the technician um, in the truck, service technician, he's at a home, you know, for whatever reason. Right? I'm also thinking about electrification and how we want to get rid of fossil fuels in, in, in home. So let's just take a scenario the technician shows up and he's working on a on a fossil fuel system, whether it be gas or, you know, or air or a boiler or whatever, and it's getting up there in age and it's time to kind of upgrade. How can Marble uh, help that technician? Uh, that technician could probably, in about 15 minutes, take the Marble app, walk around the house, measure with the customer, and put a technically perfect design in front of them right there and sell it to them. Wow. But let's unpack that, Paul, because... Um, you know, we know, especially in the Northeast, a lot of aging systems and people end up having to replace in an emergency. Yes. And and the, the, the common way that that is handled by a service tech is they say, hey, I can go down to the local supply shop. I can get you the exact same thing and I can have you back up and running this afternoon. And the people are like, yeah, do it. Okay. My question is, let's say that person has a 30-year-old boiler. Okay, what other appliance in your house that is 30 years old, if it broke today, would you buy the exact same thing? Yeah, no, it's not even an option. Okay. Okay. No. So what that technician has the opportunity to do is let them know that the latest, greatest, most efficient technology is available at the exact same supply shop. And it's going to save them money on the utilities. Right. And, and, you know, I think people in emergencies, they tend to make a this afternoon decision without realizing it that it's a 20-year decision. Right. right. And, and the, the sad part is sometimes you don't have a choice. You, you know, you've got a cold day in the middle of the winter. You know, it's a Friday afternoon and you need a major repair to get this system up and going. And, and I've always felt bad when the people have no choice. They're going to have to spend hundreds of dollars on a system where it's not really... Um, financially, there's no advantage. There. Crisis it's shopping. Just money it's crisis out the shopping. window. But yeah. planning ahead is always the best. So if a technician's there and he says, look, your system's getting up there in age, and you said in 15 minutes I can, I can have a whole new system designed and priced out for you, and you can make a decision. Absolutely. That's, a, that's awesome. That's yeah. a game changer. Yeah. You talked earlier about operational perf performance. Just uh, elaborate that in a little more. What do you mean by that? <clears throat> well, so... Diamond contractors tend to design on nominal values. So if they're sophisticated enough to do a load calc on site, and 70% of them are not, right. uh, but if they are, and they say come up with an 11,500 BTU load, they think if they put a 12,000 BTU wall head there, they're good. All right. And they never run that system through Diamond System Builder or anything. What a lot of techs and most homeowners don't understand is that when you take all these pieces and connect them, all those numbers change, and there's now an operational performance for that system. So, um, you know, a lot of these guys are out selling systems, and then they're going back to the office, checking it in Diamond System Builder, and if it's not right, they have to go back to that homeowner, revisit, and, and correct everything. Marble, you can, when, once you've built your indoor zones and now you're looking at all the outdoor units that are available for that connected system, as you scroll over each unit, it gives you the real time operational performance for each zone at the design temperature. All right. So you can literally do manual J, manual S right at the kitchen table and wow. make sure that they're going to cover their loads. Right. Well, Juan probably remembers doing manual J and all Absolutely. of that with with like a 15-page document all handwritten. Yes. And everything. I remember yeah. that. The Pencil other, shop. The other thing you guys need to think about is you're, you're probably aware that with Diamond System Builder, if, if it doesn't work, you get a fail mm -hmm. and you need to start over. With marble, because you're 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 looking at the op performance in real time, if you have a zone that you can't get the operational performance to where you need it to be, it's screaming at you to peel that zone off, make it a one-to-one, -one, and do the rest of the zones oh. on a smaller multi. Uh -huh. 
Wow. All right. So in the Northeast, what we're finding as we design primary heat systems is that most houses need a one-to-one for the core of the house and then a smaller multi for the bedrooms and, and that type of thing. Smaller size. Wow. You know? That's pretty cool. So well, you guys get all that extra production out of those FS hyperheat units. Those yeah. things are unbelievable. Yeah, they really are. That's a great product. Yeah. So, and you mentioned, I think, uh, instant pricing. So, you know, in that scenario where the sales guy, you know, has to leave and come back and do this and build it together, you're right. You, you mentioned that the customer doesn't see that value. Right. But this is, this is a price that they can, right there. It, it's... So there are tools out there where you can build a proposal, but you're you're still 100% dependent on the person you send into the home yes. to know how to conduct a proper load cal- calculation, to know all the Mitsubishi nomenclature and all the compatibility so that they can put it together. They need to know how to mitigate turndown ratio, problems under porting, refrigerant bleed off, cycling, all of those things. They need to know Diamond System Builder to check operational performance. Once they've done all of that, those other tools allow that person to pull those part numbers that they came up with on their own from a price book and build a proposal. Marble is focused solely on the interactive system design with the homeowner. Once you and the homeowner have checked out performance together, made all the adjustments, and you have the system where the customer says, yeah, that's what I want, your proposal is ready and waiting for you just move right in. Right, right. So. And going back to the helo calculation, I mean, t- as far as I'm concerned, that is the most important part of the whole process because that's the only thing you can guarantee. Any contractor that does not do a helo calculation cannot guarantee the performance of the system that goes inside that, in, into that house. Correct. And, you know, even, even the ones that can do a helo calculation, to me the question is, can you do it in the properly. house? Yes. You know, because yep. what you guys have is a fantastic product and a fantastic marketing product. And, you know, when I go to a, a, a lead that's getting three prices, they're not getting three prices on three different brands. They're getting three prices on Mitsubishi from Diamond Contractors. There are, what we find is that 10 to 40% of the people that you see will ask you if they can buy on the first call. They want Mitsubishi, right. and they're just looking for someone to check all of their right, boxes. Right. All right, so that's what we provide. We, you know, when, when someone calls you and asks you for a price, if you go out to their home and you can't give them one, you really need to ask yourself, what are you doing there? Because they called you for a price. So um, those are buyers. They've done their research. They want right, Mitsubishi, right. and they're just looking for someone to come check all their boxes. And we all experience that. You know, I want a price for something. I got to fill out information, and it takes me two days to get it. And I'm right off the bat, I'm not even... You know, whatever the product may be, yeah. you know. And, and like we talked about earlier, you know, the contractor who's doing all this stuff outside of the home, he thinks he's doing a great job for sure. the homeowner. But if they don't see it, you're not getting that value. Right. That's a good point. I never really thought of that. So, so we've got low calculation, the first step, right? Yeah. Well, besides the, the measuring, the, the relationship building with the, with the client yeah. and all that, you've got low calculation, you've got the design, You've got the pricer, so I'm assuming, and I don't want to assume, uh, you've got a, you called it a contract, I call it an agreement, an agreement generator. So, yeah, so, so what happens is once you bring up the proposal, Marble gives the homeowner cash and financing options, so we have sync really? financing. Really? Oh, wow. All right, so... And then once the homeowner picks a payment method, the marble platform actually asks them for the sale so that the person in the home doesn't have to. So there's no selling pressure. A window just pops up that says, would you like to generate a sales account? Yes or no. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget Dustin Flagg in Connecticut. He was our second user. He had been selling Mitsubishi for nine years. He had never once given a price on the first sales call. He started using Marble and sold seven of his first 11 appointments on the first call. So I'm in the Littleton Food Co-op. And Roland, you might know there's not very good cell coverage up there. So Dustin calls me, and I think he's screaming at me because my cell phone is cracking up. So I'm, I'm... 
petrified because it's my second customer, you know, and I may I'm, I'm scrambling to get to the parking lot. I abandon right, my right. cart and I get out to the parking lot and I finally have one bar of cell service. And I'm like, Dustin, I'm in the parking lot. What? And he's like, it works. The yeah. software works. They just sign it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so that was really great. But that's not what Dustin likes the most about the platform. Um, you know, Dustin, as we've been talking about, was one of those guys who used to spend all day, every Friday, doing load calculations back at his office, typing up proposals, talking to his distributor, sending out proposals. Dustin has doubled his closing percentage. He has increased his average sale by 40%. He has increased his margin by 30%, and he has not worked on a Friday in over two years. Wow. wow. I was, was going to say, that's cool. he's doing something different. Troll fishing. Yeah. Right. yeah. Troll fishing. He spends it with his family. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. The kids troll fishing. Yeah. 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 So you mentioned that this is an app, right? Are there any, other, are there any features of the, of the app that you haven't talked about yet? Or have we pretty much hit them all? Um, I'm sure if I thought about it, I could come That's up with okay. more. I mean, ball, but I think we've covered the the major. In the in the major in there is is there a browser version? There is not a browser version right now. Okay. It only works on iOS and Android. Okay, all right, good. Well, that makes sense because you're doing it on site, right? Yeah. That makes, yeah, it makes sense. all the sense in the world. Yeah. All right, and um, let's talk about training because we're the training department from uh, Mitsubishi Elect Electric Train. So. Uh, that's our that's our podcast. It's for the, the training. What kind of training do I need in, in, to get started with Marble? It all depends on the user's experience level. I, one of the things we're so proud of with Marble is that it's really meant to meet any salesperson at whatever skill level they're at. So if you've been selling for 20 years, you might just want it for the time savings because... You know, think about it. Everyone you see, they have their proposal before you walk out of the house. So you never go back to your office to do a proposal again. Um, and then for some people, it's all of that design help that you get with mitigating all the most common design right. mistakes. For you guys on the technical end, I think where we really make a difference is in putting in properly sized and technically correct systems. You know, how many times are you trying to diagnose a perfectly good piece of equipment that's cycling or, yeah. or it doesn't dehumidify because yes. it's too big. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's not much you can do yeah. to fix a perfectly good piece of equipment. Okay. So if we can get, if we can deploy proper designs to the field, right. then your technicians are not trying to fix nuisance problems that they really can't fix without replacing the equipment. Right. So a thought just occurred to me. If I'm at a call with an existing system and, and I think, hey, it's working, but they're complaining, you know, can I use Marble to build the existing system and go through and do the loads and see if it, 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 would, it would tell me, hey, it's, it's not sized properly, it's oversized, it's undersized. So I could actually use it that's as a, a diagnostic that's tool. That's a great tool right Absolutely. there. So because we just recently at Bergeron Mechanical, and I can send you the video later, Paul, but we just had a system that was done by a competitor. His major zone, his living room, kitchen, dining room area where they hang out, he last winter couldn't get it out of the f high 50s. Wow. And he called us, and I mean, there was problems with the system. All the compression fittings were leaking and all that good stuff. Yeah. But when I did the load calc, uh, he had an 18,000 BTU in there that at the design temperature was only putting out 12,500 view BTUs. And the call for the space was 24 six. Mm. Wow. So it was pretty clear. 50%. Right, right. Yeah. You know, what was going on. Right. You can so. have the best system in the world, which, by the way, we do manufacture right. the best right. system in, yes. in the world. But if it's not sized properly, it doesn't matter what you're putting and, on. And I also think people with variable speed compressors and all that stuff, they just think that you can oversize stuff, it's going to work. And uh, it's, it's, you can't oversize, you, you can't, can't undersize. You can't undersize. It's still going to be designed correctly. Well, and that's that's the thing. You can't go either way. Right. You know, a, a low calcs were always so forgiving because you'd come up with whatever you came up right. with, double right. it, throw a boil in there, yeah. and you're good, yeah. right? You do that with a heat pump, you yeah. got big problems. Yeah. Right. You, do. you know, and I, I, you know, last year I was called to a house in uh, Newburyport, Mass, North yeah. Shore. Yeah, Newburyport. Yeah. Newburyport. Yeah. North Shore. And, uh, 
and he had a 15,000 BTU one-to-one that was only six years old and the compressor was cooked. Mm. And he told me to go to his house and give him a price on a bigger one for his master bedroom because the 15 never worked right. And I go out there, I do a load calc, it's like 6,700 BTUs. And I'm explaining to him, you actually need a much smaller Smaller. one. The reason this one failed is because it cycled constantly Mm -hmm. and burned out. And, uh, and you know, that, that's, that's how these guys tend to think with heat pumps. You know, another thing I hear a lot is, well, you know, your competitors giving me a a lot more BTUs for less money. And it's like, okay, less money is good, but a lot more BTUs than what I'm quoting you is not good. Yeah, more electrical consumption. With that <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rate. All right, so yeah. let, let's finish up with, um, I noticed on your website there's a, there's a tab for support. What would I use that for? Well, you know, we support, we are a SaaS company. We're a software company. Mm-hmm. So if you're having, you know, technical issues with the app or if you're at, if you need training help, you can certainly click that tab, get some help. Uh, we off, also offer sales training. So when you onboard with the app, we'll teach you how to go through the app. Um, and then we have additional trainings available that kind of teach you how to go through the home with the app and the customer. All right. Which is a, a completely different thing than just going through the app. Right. So any one of you could pick up Marble today and build a technically correct system. Even rolling? Oh, yeah. yeah. Even rolling. But it, you're, it's, you're pushing the line wow. there. Wow. You better be quiet your, over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's your ability to convey your company's value proposition right. Right. as you build that system that's the difference between the 10 and the 40% guys. Right, right, you right. Know, right. So. so if we want to know more information, what's the website and how do we contact you or someone at Marble? The website is www.marbleplatform.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and Could you repeat that? I didn't hear it. Yeah, www.marbleplatform.com. Spell that, marble. M-A-R-B-L. No E. And that's marble. why I had you spell that yeah. because, you know, to me, that's jump out as a typo. How did you come up with that name? <laughs> That's a, this is what you can that's make. a great question. This is what you can make something up. It was actually a mind mapping session, and we kind of had this a I, mind mapping session. We kind of had yeah, that's this way beyond I, you idea that we were going to change the way uh, duckless is sold throughout the world. So we had this global vision, and that came up with the you know the planet Earth, and from there we came up with a marble, and then simply it's really cool to drop vowels now. Well, okay. I remember so we dropped the e. That makes sense. I remember when I was a kid, I, I had they used to call the earth a big blue marble. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wish there was a better story. One. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, <laughs> it's not as fine, my wondering. <laughs> all right. Tom, uh, thank you. Anything yeah, else before yeah. we let you go? The- you know, thank you. It was nice talking well, to you guys. I, I appreciate I love stopping I like in. It. I love the tech show. Yeah, yeah. I, lo- I love it when we have a podcast and I walk away much smarter yeah, than when I showed up. Yeah, which yeah. really doesn't take yeah. much as far as one's concerned, but the, the, the one hair is gone. Yeah, well, right, I hope right. the next guy can do that for you, Roland. Yeah, I, I still have fun talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't hold yeah, your that, breath. That does sound like a and great Tom, problem. You, <laughs> you mentioned uh, diamond contractors quite quite a bit. There, we are at the 2023 Diamond Contractor Conference. Um, you've got a table here. You're talking to contractors. We're educating them. Uh, thank you again for joining us. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. All right, Paul. okay. Fantastic. All right, guys. All right. Hasta All right. la vista. All right. Okay. Bye, bye, everybody. Okay. So, when can I expect my ice cream? <laughs> ah, yeah. We only have point. As soon as I find Mrs. Harrington, okay. I, will, I will bring her over. So, to what, what you're telling me is I'm talking to the wrong person. I oh, need yeah. to go to the CEO of your family. I can get the you the syrup, the ice cream you're gonna, okay. you're gonna have. Okay. I gotta to talk to the boss. Level. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna have to escalate this. Yeah. All right. Thanks again. All right, everyone. Adios.